Radio, great tens. Here we are. We're busy with our pet, and I'm working you step by step through the different components of your EGD civil pet. Now, yesterday we took our time, and I talked you through the floor plan uh, freehand concepts, and you came up with two freehand concepts. That's right. That's right. Is that right? Okay. On those freehand concepts, just a reminder: you're going to use. Exactly the sun symbols for windows, for doors, for uh, sinks, for bathrooms, all of that, that we, you would use on a traditional floor plan. All right, drawn to scale. So add key measurements, make sure you label the room styles, if there's any floor finishes, and the actual drawing. And the page needs to have a border on with your name, your grade, the page title, the scale and the page number, you can put that in at the end. All right, that's the start that we started here. Today we're looking at the selection process because now you've got two concepts and I know you're very chuffed with both of them, but one of them are better than the other one. And we have to go through a process of determining which one is it. And people, this is the same process that you will follow in grade 11 and 12 when you are deciding on what concept to use. And so in this one, we have reduced the criteria and we've reduced the requirements of this page, but it is in, is in essence still the same. So the title of this page is Selection Process, an Afrikaans Selection Process. And in the path that I've given you, you have to come up with five criteria. Okay. And we are going to have to then give a score for each concept. So here's concept one, concept two. We're going to give a score and we are going to have a total here in the end. That tells us which one scored higher, and we're going to conclude with a, a, a conclusion. Okay, so let's look at the actual pattern. You're going to help me because you've all done your specifications and constraints. We know that one of the criteria is that this building cannot exceed 40, exceed 45, is it 45 square meters? Okay. Maybe you, when you write that yourself, please write that in print. Maybe I can give a better example on the next one. What's the expectation? What's the other part of this? It needs to be wheelchair friendly. Is that correct? Okay, so we're going to uh, write that as a criteria. So the first one was the sizing. The second one, we say it must be wheelchair friendly. Come up with a third one. What would be another one that we could measure? Friendly. Okay, natural lighting was the next one. So let's... Natural light, natural ventilation. Okay, natural light. What would be a fourth one? So natural light and ventilation has to do with the windows, right? Okay. What would be a fourth one? What about the ergonomics? Because that was part of your research, right? And uh, those of you unsure what is ergonomics, that is how the, the human living in that house will relate to the layout of that house or the height of the cabinets, the ease of access in the kitchen, getting from the stove to the fridge to the um, work surface or the zinc, etc. So another one would be the overall layout and design. That was something else that you had to research. Okay, of the actual floor plan. What, what did we want there? We wanted it to be modern. Okay. All right. Um, what's the last one? Okay, so... Um, um, so maybe we do this, the layout and design, and then we, we, we put talk about creativity. Is it a creative... Because that was... I really wanted you to come up with a creative and new design, not something that we've seen before, okay? All right, so whatever, sorry, that design doesn't fit in there. 
So whatever is your criteria, you're going to list that. Okay. Um, so now we can go back to concept one. And we are going to come up with a rating scale. I actually should have left space here. Maybe you can add that in there. But let's do, we say for three out of three is excellent. Okay. We like really think this is excellent. At two out of three, we say would be fair or good. All right. And a one out of three would be poor. Okay. And so now there's a very simple scale that we can use to rate our own drawing. So if we look at this one, um, if we think of the fact that ex does it exceed 45 square meters? Well, we've got 5 times 8 meters, so we're within that. So we're going to give concept 1 a 3 there. Okay. Maybe your concept 2 is also 3, then that's fine if it's within the bounds of it. Okay. Next one, wheelchair friendly. Again, now you have to look at your layout and you have to judge it. If we look at this layout, I think, well, it might be a little bit difficult. Let's say it's someone that's disabled and they have to uh, drive this way to get to that cupboard, this way to get to, and this is a walk-in closet. Well, that's going to be tough for them. There's not no turning around space here. Getting to this bathroom, out into the, you know, this isn't definitely a wheelchair-friendly design. So for me, if giving on the, on this part maybe here again it's nice open space that's better so for wheelchair friendly on this one i would say maybe one and a half for poor to fair or let's be generous and say fair your second concept might be even worse than this one or better than this one you have to be the judge there and we say okay well this the second concept is really poor we give that a one all right natural light and ventilation now if i look at this actual layout here, if we think in South Africa, the the sun rises here in the east. There's our north arrow. So early morning, we've got a nice window here. We've got natural light coming into the living room. You will actually might have some sun rays coming through this uh, also here into that corridor. But then at noon, we're going to have lightning come through on all these northern windows, which is nice and big. So natural light. And your afternoon sun into the bedroom. So very good. We've got on the southern side all our bathrooms, our kitchen cabinetry. So that's good because there's no, it, it's cold on this side, not sun getting. But what's nice about this open plan is that the sun will get through into the back of this building. If I now, let's say I had a wall that's running like this. Let's say this part maybe was turned like this. Do you see what that immediately does? It blocks the sun, even if there was a wall there, for instance. It blocks the sun from getting to the back. So those are the kind of things that you're going to just weigh when you think about natural ventilation and natural sunlight. I would give this one a three year. Maybe my second concept, I've got a, a very closed room maybe, uh, or there's a wall running here that separates maybe with a corridor. That's impractical. Isn't it? So I'll give my other one fair. Okay, right. ergonomics, that's how you relate with your actual, um, so let's just look, I know we're more on kitchen nights and those kind of things, but even here, if I was working as a person in this kitchen, the fridge, the stove, they're nice within reach from each other, you could draw a triangle between the three and that is optimal. If you can do that, then ergonomically your kitchen is sorted. Let's think practically, if I do go to the bathroom, I I want to be able to wash my hands in the in the bathroom, so that's fine. But now on the shower side, you know, there's no place here as a there's no basin here, so maybe it's a little bit um, impractical having the division. But the advantage here is that the guests could use my bathroom without necessarily seeing the shower. So again, that is functional. But you'll have to kind of um, be a judge on your own layout how that ergonomics relates to the other one. In this one, I would give us a two. The other example might also give it two. All right, layout and design. Now, this is a very modern layout. I don't think many of you have seen a, a, a bathroom that's spread in uh, uh, two parts like this. Um, we were creative here using the wall between the bedroom and the living room with built-in cupboards. So here also, I would say layout and design. Three out of three, your second concept might also be a three or might be a two, doesn't matter. Right, 
Then I'm looking at something that's creative and that's new. And so, you know, well, it's creative in some ways, but it might not be in all ways. So let's give ourselves a two year and the other one also was very poor. We'll give that one a one. All right. And so then we're going to add all of that up. Actually, there's already the total. So uh, five plus 10, 15 here. And this one is four plus eight plus four is 12. So our concept is concept number one that we've selected. And then I want you, if you're using my page, let's put a nice border around it so it's clear which concept is the win. You can help me out with that. That would be wonderful. All right. Then the last part of the selection process is then for you to finish off with a conclusion here at the bottom. And this is a written conclusion. So if I look at this one, the question here is, is, I mean, one sentence you can write is, yeah, I've chosen concept one because it scored the best. But if there's any revisions that you want to make to this selection, to this actual layout, and so this is part of the process, is thinking, what is it? And if we just on, on looking at this one, is anybody in class that would like to comment on this one that you think something here could change, could be added to make it even better? I I do have a suggestion myself. I don't know if any of you. Do you yes, Emma. Um, the the division between the bedroom and the living room. Okay. It could be moved closer towards the uh, top. Wall, okay. Yeah. Um, to make it more wheelchair friendly to get. Into to the have room. a bit more access on this side. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. You could also add maybe a sliding door here, on this side. You know, and another sliding door on that side so to give some more privacy. That would be a revision. She says you can also move the entire that way. That's also good. Yes. Who else had another? I was going to say another thing about the walking path being wheelchair friendly. Because it might be hard for the room to get in there. So why don't you move the door instead of being on this side of the wall and close that door? Ah, okay. So to put the door here or this side. Yeah. And then you make your, sh your cupboard... More like that, for instance. So you can come in and then you can, you, you can, that's a very good idea. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. If the door was this way, this was closed off, that cupboard ran like this. And then if a wheelchair comes in here, they've got access to all three sides. That's much. Okay. So it's exactly that thinking through and then coming up here when I say, okay, I've chosen, I've chosen concept one, but with the following revisions. The first revision is add sliding doors, okay? Sliding doors for privacy. Sliding doors for privacy, like I've just explained to you. So just a simple note. And the second one is um, the walk-in closet. Yo, closet door position. Walk in closet. I saw that, don't worry. Okay. All right. So, walk in closet door position. So, just doing, maybe there's another third one. I'd like to actually add a window here in the kitchen. All right. So, that would be something that I would add, and then I will add that as number three. Okay. When you do write this, please make sure you write it neatly. But the, it's a very simple page. You can redo this entire page on your own computer, or you can just fill it in and write it out by hand, but the components that I require is at least five criteria, a simple grading scale that you've added for yourself, clearly indicate which one is the win, conclude by saying I've selected concept one or concept two, and these are the revisions that is required. And then when we go to our actual floor plan, you're going to incorporate these few adjustments. Right here? That's it. That's it. Talk through the selection process in EGD, um, doing the civil pad for grade 10, now it's your turn.